Uh, welcome to our special interview today. I'm thrilled to have with me today, back for the second time, Susan Bryant. Hello, Susan. Hey, Rob. Great to be here. It's lovely to have you back again. Susan, for those people that are regular listeners, and we've got thousands of them all over the world, they will have heard you before talking about how accountants can educate their clients on what it means to be a good client. So today we're going to switch that and talk about how the client can educate their accountant. But just before we do that, let's recap on the interview we had before. Very briefly, what can accountants do to make sure their clients step up and be better clients? Yeah, well, accountants have to be better about communicating expectations. Um, They really need to talk to the client about what they need in terms of information and time. Um, They need to explain their processes so that the client knows what to expect. I think there's a lot of... um, we, I am on a ton of Facebook groups where accountants are always complaining about, you know, clients have unrealistic expectations. <laughs> and whose fault is that? <laughs> right. It's the accountant's fault. Uh, there's this expectation that a tax return just will be produced magically, just like it's overnight process. I can bring my stuff in today and you'll have it done tomorrow. That's just not realistic. Uh, so we really need to go back to the client at the time that they are approaching us about becoming our client and tell them, I'm going to collect information and then I'm going to examine it and then I'm going to call you questions and, you know, whatever your process looks like Mm -hmm. and then explain what that, how long it's going to take, two weeks, three weeks, a month. Uh, That's the piece that we're missing. People just don't understand that the preparation process takes a while. You have to examine information. You have to understand what's going on with each particular client, especially new clients. It's a lot to learn. Everyone's tax situation is so unique. Um, I think there's also sort of this idea um, that accountants really need to be more thoughtful about the specific nature of the services they're going to render, right? So I'm not just preparing a tax return. I'm looking for opportunities along the way. I'm going to be make, making recommendations about things we should be doing differently next good. year. Yeah, really so good. those things take time and to formulate and develop and to think about. So that knowledge, the I mean, looking things up, if we're talking about in, investigating or researching a particular tax subject that may result in a, a change uh, in the ben- to the benefit of the taxpayer, those things take time. Mm. So it's really important that we explain exactly what we're going to do and what those processes entail. It's not just tax preparation. It's not just me put information in a, in a series of boxes and spit out a form. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of other things that go into that. And ultimately, for you, and ultimately for you, Susan, what makes the good accountants great? Mm. They have a vision to the future. That's, I think, what makes accountants great. So they use and harness the past, but ultimately they're focused on changing the future for their clients. That is so powerful. So we as accountants have to shed this idea that somehow we're only useful to people by reporting things that happened previously. Really, our power lies in the fact that we can alter someone's financial future by helping them map out strategies for tax planning, by helping them to organize and professionalize their finance function in their companies, by helping them implement strategies that move their business, introducing them to our network of experts. I mean, this is remarkable. If you think about it, I mean, changing someone's financial future, what more could you want? (laughs) What more could you want from any professional? Yes. You're so passionate about it. There'll be people signing up to be accountants as we speak right now, just here. I hope so. We need them. (laughs) Of course. So let's look at this from a client's perspective then. We know what makes a good accountant great. What makes a good client great, Susan? A great client is someone who approaches their CPA, their accountant with a mindset that they want to learn from them, that they respect their knowledge, they respect their time, they respect the demands on them, the deadlines, the different elements of things that are happening in their business. They want to view them as a long-term partner. It's not a commoditized transaction. It's a relationship. They have to want to, they want to get the best value out of the accountant. They want to pay for it. So they have to approach it in that way. Um, there are a lot of clients who view the accountant 
as being someone who's just a servant to them, right? So you just do this. You just live in this part. You're compartmentalized in my life. And even a necessary evil, Susan. Perhaps. True. Um, and your accountant is someone who should be involved in all aspects of both your professional and personal life. Ultimately, your business is your biggest asset. They need to understand where it's going and how if things go wrong or as things improve, what that means to you personally. All of these strategies work together towards the benefit of the client personally. I mean, ultimately, there is a person who will benefit from it, whether it's the owner or the owner's family, legacy heirs, whatever. You know what I mean? There is a beneficiary. And I, I think that the, the clients really need to make sure that they are oh, approaching their CPA as someone who is truly a partner in all of that. Nicely put. Yes, because we see very good clients and we see very poor clients and there's a big difference in that relationship and a big difference in the outcome. So it's crucial to get this right on both sides. Yeah, and I mean, I think there are also, I mean, there are instances where a, a client and a CPA are just, they're not going to fit perhaps. I mean, and, then, and being aware, I guess maybe this is where emotional awareness and even having a little bit of um, just general person, you know, like, I don't know if it's uh, some type of counseling or, you know, therapy skills to really understand yourself and understand the client. What are their motivations? What do they really want from you? Understanding yourself, who do you want to serve? What are you great at? Who can you best benefit? There has to be a lot of awareness around that. Not every client's going to be a great client for you. They might be a great client, but they need to be with someone else. And so, I'm, I'm thinking some some of these great clients that you're talking about that see their accountant in this way. They're a little bit like four-leaf clovers or leprechauns or pixies. We don't see them very much and we're very lucky to have them. But I guess you would say that you can turn good clients into great clients with the way you educate them and the way we talked about in the last interview. Yeah, many of them just don't have the knowledge of what accountants do. They don't understand all of the things that are happening in the background of, of how, it, how CPAs function, how they are educated, the things that they are able to help with. They don't understand the menu of services that a CPA offers. They think a CPA prepares tax returns or a CPA prepares financial statements or they do audits. They have a misconception of all the things that we do offer. Mm. So most of the time when they come to us and they say, I'm an S corp and I need to file my 1120S, we just say, okay, we'll file your tax return. Instead of really exploring the conversation, you know, what is your business? Where is it in its life cycle? What is the pain that you're experiencing? You know, how can we really be of value? You know, so a lot of the problems are that accountants, we're not listening. We, we're hearing what they have to say, but we don't know how to interpret what they're saying into, let me show you all the other ways that I can help you. Mm. So what, you, what, bad, bad. <laughs> uh, what have you, in your view, then do business owners need to hear from their accountant? You've, you've alluded to a few of them, but if they don't hear this stuff from their accountant, they need to be asking their accountant for this stuff. What falls into those categories? Oh, this could be anything from retirement planning. Like what's going to happen to me if this business doesn't work out? I, how do I save for retirement? It could be, you know, specific tax strategies. It could also just be things like, hey, I don't have a will. I need to get one of those. Who should I talk to? Uh, um, my banker, I have a problem getting financing. I really need a different relationship. How do I, how do I have those conversations? How do I get more out of my banker? What should I be talking about? You know, can you help me? Every aspect of your business, really your accountant can help with. What's happening in the operations is mirrored in the financial statements. So oftentimes we're bringing up things like, hey, I think you need to go back and look at your operations in this particular, you know, department. This profitability is declining. What's going on here? I think it's just a matter of broadening the perspective of the client to leverage the talents of the CPA. There's just so, so many things. We have our clients fill out something called a circle of key advisors because it's not just us, but it's a team of people. It's a collaboration among all of these experts to really drive the value for the client. So we've got to work with someone who is their financial planner, money manager, someone who's handling their payroll is outsourced, 
insurance? I mean, do you have the right coverage? Are you having those discussions? Um, so many business owners have things on autopilot that they're on the hamster wheel, they're just doing what they're doing, that they don't have time to really spearhead those things. Use your accountant. Go to them and say, how do I, how do I handle these things? Can someone from your staff help me to identify the things that are expensive in my business or even personally that I really need to take the time to evaluate more closely that could pose the most risk to me, the most risk to my business? Could a good client make up for a poor advisor? If I was a great client and I had a lousy accountant, I could make that accountant good by proactively asking them all of these questions. Can you signpost me to this? Can you help me with my will? Can you help me with that tax thing? So the accountant doesn't need to think proactively at all and they don't need to position any advisory. It comes to them. Yeah. I, I suppose it would get the accountant to think about it more. Um, it's not ideal, but it could happen that way. It could happen. I think that the client would tire of that, yes, to be real honest. Of I, I think that they want someone who is so really focused on putting them on, I call it a cadence. We have like a strategic planning cadence here that we follow. So we're really talking to these clients like every other month. Some conversations are more in-depth than strategic. Some are more tax focused. Some are more business focused. Some are more personal focused. But this cadence allows us to constantly be in, um, in sync with them. You're in lockstep, which means that as things are changing in their business, which means that relationship is getting deeper. They're now coming to us outside of those meetings, asking questions, which is what we want. We want to be on the front end versus on the back end. Um, but it really is up to the client to be the driver. I mean, sorry, and not the client, the accountant, we really need to be the drivers. The if the client is driving, it's going to be inconsistent because they're going to get busy. You know, most CEOs squirrel. I mean, they're just <laughs> shiny objects. They're chasing the next thing. They're chasing the next revenue. And so they'll just forget and it'll just fall off. And then it's, so the client can be proactive. I just don't find that they most consistently are. So the CPA should be driving. We should be setting the calendar. We should be making sure that those meetings are happening. In the last interview, you talked about what an accountant should do with a bad client. How do you fire that bad client and that honest, courageous conversation that needs to happen there? What should good clients do with poor accountants? Fire them? Well, they need to have a similar conversation with them about what they expect, what they want. Mm -hmm. Some CPAs, I think, will be persuaded to think differently. And, and others are so rooted, you know, these deep-rooted uh, beliefs, you know, as to what their position is that they won't change. So I'd like to believe and hold out hope that all accountants can truly change and become great and serve their clients in that way. And it would be awesome if there were clients that would give accountants that, um, that ability and that time to develop. I just think most business owners uh, and clients, they're impatient. You know, they'd rather move on to someone who already has those systems and processes built where it's almost guaranteed they're going to receive immediate benefit. And most often they do because they've been neglected. You've been in this game a long time, Susan. You mentor and help accountants to do the kind of things that you do in your firm. You're great at being a resource for them. How coachable do you feel accountants CPAs are as a breed? Because they take the qualifications, they great at the technical stuff, they do the thing that has to be done. But beyond that, the, the softer skills, how willing are they and able to learn and be teached on that stuff? Yeah, I, it's probably generational. Uh, That's I a good point. do think, yeah, I think there's some generational things. Uh, but I do also believe that our industry um, and our in our profession, we are seeing some changes in mindset. There are uh, there are people who are interested in changing the way they work. They don't want to be stressed out. They want to make a difference to these clients. Uh, there's a lot of resources now. Information is really available. Podcasts like this, information is flowing more frequently. That's inspiring them to think differently. So I think that things are changing. And I think mindsets over a period of time will be dramatically uh, different. You mentioned in the last interview a post that you put up, I think it was on LinkedIn, Susan, where you said, this is the kind of client we want. This is the kind of client we don't want. This is the way we work. This is the way we don't work. How important is it for accountants to be very specific about what they're looking for in clients? And I guess the other way around as well. Yeah, I think that they need to get crystal clear on who their perfect client is. 
Otherwise, you're wasting your time, you're spinning your wheels, you're probably serving people who aren't going to value uh, your work, they will be disgruntled at the end and feel like it was a waste of their money. You know, so there's really an important um, element here, and that is defining who is your ideal client. Who are you great at serving? And then you will be nothing but successful. It's, it's important for clients uh, to understand that accountants have different areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. There are niche areas of focus. If you are in real estate or if you are in a specific space, whether it's manufacturing or software, under getting a CPA who is I got a lot of qualifications on that, that area can mean a world of difference. So uh, similar to like doctors, right? So it's like you go to your general practitioner and then they send you to a specialist. The same thing should be working that way for, for accountants. You know, clients need to be aware that the clients specialize in, you know, CPAs specialize in different things. Mm -hmm. Find someone who is great at serving businesses like yours. That helps a lot um, because then there are more, um, levers to pull in terms of just the benefits, right? You, you've got all this access to probably people in your network, in, in terms of your uh, uh, staff, qualifications, knowledge, the intellectual capital that exists, it's going to all help the, help, the, help the client in the end. I'm glad you mentioned doctors in the medical profession, Susan. There's a certain mystery about what doctors and surgeons do, and you don't really want to ask them too much. But for a client that is coming to an accountant, let's say they've switched firms for whatever reason, they've outgrown their old accountant or they weren't served. What should potential clients be asking a potential CPA in deciding whether that's going to be a good fit? And to make the bad ones feel uncomfortable. I think the discovery call is really the most important thing. You know, asking questions like, what is your budget for this service? Um, and, you know, uh, and understanding fully the expectations, like what do you expect, what do you expect the CPA to do? Um, what are you looking for the CPA to do? Uh, I mean, these general questions all the way down to the money questions. The, the discovery call, the deeper you can get in clarifying that scope from the front end, the more you're understanding the client. I mean, even how quickly they're going to send you the information, right? Right. So I've asked this information to build a proposal. And if it takes them six months to send it to you after you followed up several times, if, if you're in the business of wanting to jump in, help clients make an immediate impact and transform their businesses, if they don't respond timely, you're probably going to be frustrated with them. And going the other way around, a client that is looking for a new CPA, what questions should they be asking to see if that's a fit the other way? Capacity, how they work, what is their what is their recipe for helping clients? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That that's got to be really important. You know, do they have a system and process? I think that's fundamental. They've got to be asking those questions. They need to understand the specifics of the services that they're asking for. A lot of times, people you know will will come to us and say, "I need an audit." Um, they don't even know what an audit is, <laughs> <laughs> but they need it. So and those are those are some things that you know. Uh, CPAs have to educate the clients, but the clients need to become educated about the services that CPAs provide. Yeah, that makes good sense. In your firm there, you will take on clients that have not been happy with their providers before you. So what would make a client switch accounting firms or CPAs? Uh, chief complaint is they feel ignored. No one responds to their emails. They're difficult to access whoever's working on their work. They don't get the work done timely. There's no communication. They don't know where their, their stuff is in the process. Uh, those are the things, chief, chief complaints. It, it all has to do with customer service, 100%. Mm. There's not a lot of people who are upset about the actual quality of the work that their accountant is doing, mainly because they don't even understand what the accountant is doing. That's sort of another problem. Um, but in a lot of cases, what happens is, is that they leave because of the, the customer service issues. What they find is, is that they, they've not only been underserved from a service perspective, but they've also been underserved from a strategic perspective. They've been leaving tax dollars on the table. Uh, their accounting records are a mess or not updated for a whole year or something. So there's a lot of other problems in the background. So we as um, business owners need to understand that the customer service issues could be assigned to our customers, right? That 
things aren't working right in other parts of our business. And that should also be assigned to clients. If I can't get a response to my email, what else is going wrong? Mm -hmm. What else aren't they doing? Susan, let's say I had a magic wand and I could make you the czar, the emperor worldwide of the accounting profession. So you're in charge of everything, all the CPAs in the world. What I like to, <laughs> what, yeah, the power, what needs to change? What would be top of your agenda for making things even better? Mm. Wow, that's a really big question. Well, you, you've been interviewed now because depending on your answer, I may or may not give you the job. So. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> man, I really feel like it's all, it's all on the line here. <laughs> I think the biggest thing as accountants that we have to work on is we have to revamp the culture of CPAs, the mindset of CPAs, the way that we work and the way that we interact with other professionals People treat CPAs different than they do attorneys or doctors. I do not understand this. We need to elevate ourselves to the position that we are in. We are advisors. We literally can change someone's entire financial future. That is important. We need to elevate ourselves to that. And we need to assume that position. We need to start charging what we're worth. But we also need to know that the obligations, that we need to deliver on that. We have an obligation to do the things that we say we're going to do. So I think it's a culture shift. It's a complete culture shift. It's a complete mindset shift. It's getting everybody on board to think that way. It's no longer transactional. It's not, what's my refund going to be? We, those conversations don't even happen because we've inspired our clients to say, it doesn't even matter what my refund is. I know that you've done everything in your power to make sure that my return is perfect or my financials are great or whatever the situation is, they trust us implicitly because we have painted a vision for them as to who we are and what we do. And they are confident in that and they pay the bill too. You hired, you start on Monday. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm not Wonderful. asking you how are you going to bring that culture change about, but uh, it, it's a great vision. I, I, it's probably going to be the greatest challenge for uh, the future of the future accountants, right? Our, our younger professionals, they'll have, they'll, they're the ones who are going to do the hard work. Mm. Susan, we'll put your contact details in the show notes so that people can reach out to you and accountants listening. You're always open to having a conversation, helping them, mentoring them, getting them to where you are. Let's just finish with this. You say on your LinkedIn profile, you're a CPA with a vision to help business owners achieve their dreams. Just excite the accountants listening with some words of encouragement for what that actually means and get them feeling that, yes, I'm definitely in the right game. Yeah, so I think accountants spend a lot of time focused on all the, the tasks, their to-dos, right? And I like to tell people that you should have a stop doing list as much as you should have a to-do list. So we've got to start, start um, building a vision for ourselves. We've got to eliminate limiting beliefs. We have to dream bigger too, as accountants, what we can do for our clients, how we can do it, what we can do for ourselves and our profession. There is no limit to the possibilities. For whatever reason, as we become adults and certainly in the business world, there's this, well, this is how you do it. And you got to follow these rules. And I just think we have to take time away from all of those things and, and use our imagination. Dare to dream. And the accountants themselves don't need to have dreams. It's the, the dreams of the business owners they're serving that they can play into, isn't it? Absolutely. And harness that uh, for your own vision. Hmm. You, know, you Use all the transformation that you've done for other clients you know, to show how that's changed you. Uh, I like to say that I align our business. We have, a, we have a chief business mission, and that is to transform our clients, right? We, that's what we want to do. But there's another mission that we have, and that's to transform our industry by changing the way our firm operates. But the final mission we have is to transform ourselves. We become better professionals, better humans, better community members, better contributors to everything, whether it's our family or our world, if we improve. So we have to align everything that we're doing with those overarching goals that we have. That's what visionaries do. And everyone needs to become a visionary for their life. CPAs need to have a vision for themselves, for their clients, help them paint that financial vision. If it's not there, 
built it. You use the word transform a lot, Susan. It's not just incremental, is it? You're talking about substantial, significant change that comes from deep down, that has at the highest possible impact and the highest possible value. Is that what transformation means for you? I'm putting it, it words is. in your mouth. But. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a complete reinvention of yourself okay. yeah. and your thoughts and your future. Mm. And if you, and you have to have a plan, and it's just like when you open up Apple Maps, right? You say, I'm going to go from here to here. And it tells you how to get there. You and your mind have to be intentional about going through all of those ways to get where you want to go. It is, it's critical, absolutely critical. But it starts with having this vision of what that transformation means to you. So what do you want to become? And then you will achieve it. And that is the transformation. Well, Susan Bryant, that's been inspirational. Thanks so much for your time and your insights again today. It was great hanging out with you, Rob. Thanks so much for having me on. You've been watching or listening to the Accounting Influencers podcast featuring host Rob Brown and Martin Bissett with key interviews, what's working in the accounting profession and news from the accounting and fintech world that helps you do your jobs better. We go out to 144 countries, over 20,000 unique listeners with 100,000 downloads and it is accredited for continued professional education and development. Thank you for tuning in.